right, first uh, welcome to the bay here. Uh, this is McNabb's Bay or the Malagash Basin. It's Canada's first oyster farm. I can go out on the bay, I can harvest. There's always something there that brings me close to nature. Something, it, it's very difficult for me to put into words, but uh, that bay has been the one truly consistent thing every day, looking out at that bay. And uh, it's never, it's never been the same twice, but yet it's always consistently there. And, uh, you know, always ready to, you know, cure your spirit and to look after your needs. Pretty, pretty special place. You know, it's just all so much fun. I can't, I can't quite stop. <laughs> well, Alexander McFarland started it. I guess the shortest way of putting it is that Alexander McFarland had the vision, got the lease, invited his family, the McNabs, in to operate it for him, and McNabs dragged my great-great-grandfather in. And I guess that's about how it took place. I'm awfully glad they did. And uh, McNabs and the Purdies have been fa really good friends, and we still are, so. It's gone down through a lot of generations. So, historically, I had heard stories about it. And as I was working at uh, all these other things, we had a farm, we had a sawmill, we had a crew working in the woods, we had trucks running on the highways, we had a wood chipping company, we had a store, and running in circles, cackling like a rooster with his head half chopped off some of the time. Uh, I needed something to relax. And, uh, <laughs> I always thought if you were going to relax, it would be a good idea to make money while you were doing it. So uh, uh, I started out with a, a license to uh, recreationally fish oysters, because that was relaxing and I loved oysters. So uh, then uh, I had the opportunity to move that to a commercial license. So I got commercial oyster license and um, started doing that uh, just as a hobby, because it relaxed me. and. Uh, so, you know, I, I knew the industry. This is what basically happened. Uh, basically, the process is we, uh, I go out, or one of, one of the boys or workers go out, and we fuel up the harvester, we fire it up. Oregon, you want to fire her up? Oh, it takes. Yep, water pressure just hits the bottom, and it's just the turbulence of it hitting the bottom and glancing off. It just brings the shellfish along with it. Yeah. Not much to it. Well, the old one's getting pretty rusty. Uh, it's run 25 years, and uh, the metal is getting tired, rusted out. So this one's a lot heavier material, so it should uh, it should last at least 35 years or so. And I'm 68. If I get another 30 years of work in, probably that's enough. <laughs> we'll see. It's nothing special. Uh, I think everybody can do it if they trust themselves to do it and believe they can, I think they can. Our system maybe today is so regulated and regimented that people have lost a lot of their ability to create. Uh, I think our school system wants to make everybody the same. And we shouldn't be the same. We should all be individuals and following what our hearts tell us to do. service boat will bring the oysters down. 
They come into the shore and they can be put off in the water and left in bags overnight or they can be brought directly into the plant. They're taken from the tubs in the plant, dumped on the table and they're washed. You want to, one of you guys want to explain what you're doing here? I'm basically uh, sizing the cohogs, uh, sorting them out of the, uh, they come in with the oysters and the cohogs are all together, so I take them out and size them into small, medium, and large. And um, then we also have to clean the oysters. Um, if there's any seed or uh, dead shell on them, like that. And then we grade them and size them into many different sizes, small, medium, and large standard and then four different sizes of choice. Well, I never got a taste for oysters, unfortunately. But I tell people, well, I'm not gonna eat up the profit. When I um, retired from teaching at 55, then I was full-time doing in, in, with the oyster business. Yeah, she's the financial head of everything. Yeah. I couldn't add two and two together, I don't think. She seems pretty good at it. Yes, yeah, I enjoy the freedom of, of having our own business and working with our daughter. Rachel Purdy McKenzie and uh, her husband, Zach, he also knows how to run the harvester and everything, so. <clears throat> I'm in no hurry to croak, but if I was, um, there's somebody there who knows how, and we've got a number of other people that work with us that uh, know how to run it, so more people know how to do things here, the better. And the ones that are ready for market at that time can be sold. Every, uh, every week we post a little recipe on our, uh, on our website. So this one here, the recipe this week is oyster stew. The oyster, if I had my way, I would never charge for an oyster because in the native culture, food is something you share <coughs> and an oyster was something that was special in the culture and something to be shared at a, at a party or a gathering or a get together. But being practical and uh, thank goodness I have a, a wife that's a lot more practical than me and a daughter that's more practical practical than I am. They're able to do it in such a way that I make money and they can keep me going doing the silly things. I try to, but sometimes he's hard to keep in line. If that's just, I think that's a man thing. We have things changing in the bay there that, that we can do nothing about. Uh, invasive species have come in like green crab which has decimated a lot of a lot of the native species. It's wiping out the eel or the seagrass, eel gas beds. Um, but my own part in it is is to, when I'm through, is to make sure that what I've done in the bay hasn't harmed it. It's made it, if anything, better rather than worse. So we're we're very try very very hard to make sure that. Everything follows the cycles as, as they should out there. You know, I think mankind has really messed up his <coughs> idea of stewardship over the environment. And uh, I think we really all, as a, as a people of the world, need to look at what we're doing and, and make some drastic changes. People say, well, what, what can I do? I'm just one person. But if every one person does a little bit, It'll make a big change. If you have a dream, if there's something you want to do, don't be afraid to do it because life is really short and when we get through it, there's nothing wrong with saying I failed at something, but if you didn't try it, you never know. So, give her! That's it for me.